the ultimate guide for amazing poses in stable diffusion. Hello my friends, how are you doing? So in this video I'm going to show you different methods to create poses and get amazing results. They are going to be rising in complexity but also they give you better results and more control over the poses you create and the scenes you build. Let's get started. So the first method here is the open pose editor in Automatic 11.11. Now as you can see here this is a very simple tool but it also gives you rather simple results. But still let's have a look at how to use that. First of all where do you get that? Well you go here to extensions, you go to available, you click on load from and then look in the list here for the open pose editor. Once you've found that you go to the right side and click on install. Let that install finish. Afterwards you click here on installed and then you want to click on apply and restart UI. Afterwards you should see the open pose editor up here and you have a character where you can grab these points and you can move them around to create a very simple pose from the camera looking head on onto the character. Now you can also click here on reset to remove everything, click on add to create another character. Now the thing here is you can only move the character at the start but not afterwards which makes close-ups a little bit more challenging but you can also create multiple characters. So here we have the first one, let's add a second one over here and then you can maybe create a simple fight scene with that. You can be very creative with this but like I said you don't have much option on rotating the camera and having more interesting perspectives and angles in your composition. Also another problem I found here is that these points up here even though they seem to indicate a head position don't really give the AI a good idea where the character is looking, what kind of direction the face is turning. Now after you're finished with this you click down here on send to control net and this will then end up down here in your control net input. Now the very important part here is now because this already is an open pose map that you turn off the preprocessor so you set this to none. Of course you want to enable control net that's a given. Then the model you want to set to open pose also very important. For the weight you want to play around with the value that works best for you. The other settings try around and set them to your choosing. Now one thing I want to suggest to you if your GPU is good enough is to render with 768 by 768 because the higher resolution gives you better results. After our render has finished you can certainly see that the input and output are similar in pose. It has added a torch for some reason to the hand of the character but otherwise it's not too bad. So for an easy way to start poses this is the way to go. Next I want to show you a page that is a lot of fun to use. It has pre-created poses but you can rotate them in 3D and adjust the lighting so you can still have a lot of fun. Now this is a very simple method but at the same time it gives you a good portion of control. So when you scroll down here you can see we have different characters. We have also different themes here for the poses. For example daily life. When you click on that there is a small choice of different poses. And when you click on one of these poses this is opening up and loading this model here. Now you can click here to expand this to the full size of your browser window. With your mouse wheel you can zoom in and out. With clicking and dragging you can rotate around the character. The interesting thing here is you also see the muzzle structure of the character and as you can see I can also create perspectives from below, from above, I can zoom into and also what I can do here with the right mouse button click and drag I can move the camera around. So this already gives me a lot of choice to create interesting poses. Now down here we have a small menu with additional options. On the eye we have overall settings. You can set this to color or gray. You see how the character is changing. You can turn on a floor grid to give the eye a bit more to work with. And another option that is very useful here is to turn on or off shadows. Now I found personally that shadows help me because they give the AI more information on the 3D shapes in the body. The next button will mirror the perspective that can also be very useful and quick. Then we have a little character that lets us choose between male and female. 
Next, we have here camera choices. Now here you can click on predefined poses, but you can also adjust the viewing angle. This is for the camera and can be very useful and can, for example, introduce more drama, introduce different sizes, because of course, when we have objects that are further away, they are closer to us, or we have different focal lengths of the camera, these things look different to us. So in this case, you can see that now the character, because of the different viewing angle, looks more gigantic than before. Another ability we have here is to adjust the light. Now here is some predefined options. For example, the first one is better. Then we have split. We have split with fill, which is very interesting. We have horror from below and we have rim light. Now all of that can help you to create really interesting images with stable diffusion because these lightings can also be adapted by the AI and by control net. One thing that I find works really well is split with the fill light because this gives us a lot of shadows and highlights to help the AI define the 3D shapes in that character. In most cases, Iceboot also suggests to turn off the floor grid because that might confuse the AI and you might end up with lines in your image. One other setting in lighting you can adjust is the intensity of the light to make it brighter or darker. After that, just take a screenshot, save the image and pull it down here into the input of control net. So in this case, I'm choosing a perspective that is seen from below. Let's set this to Kenny for the preprocessor and also for the model. And I will render this with the same settings as before. So as you can see here, this really stuck to the pose, but also we have a camera that is below the character looking up at the character. So this already gives us a lot more artistic control over our output and because dynamic angles are so important to tell a story and to bring motion and expression into your images, to have control over the camera angle is a really important thing. Next, I want to show you posemy.art and this has a huge benefit that I can click here on pre-made scenes and I can simply load them. So in this case, I don't have to set up any pose, but I can still, if I want to adjust the pose, so I can click here on the character. You can see I have all these points here for the finger, for all of the limbs, for the body. I can also move the camera around, which is really amazing because as you can see here, I can adjust this to create pretty dramatic scenes with multiple characters in them. Now, in this case, again, I have the choice to make some extra settings. You click up here on the cogwheel and there you have the floor grid. You can turn it off. You can also turn off the ground. So this is basically floating in the air. You can turn off the outlines, but I wouldn't suggest that because otherwise the AI is not going to recognize what is going on. In addition, you have here live shadows that you can turn on, but in that case, you want to adjust the light to actually show these shadows. If you don't want to have all of these characters, you can also click on them. And then down here, you have a delete bucket. Now the sword is still here, delete that too, and the box can also be deleted. So now we are ending up with just one character. The good thing is also to save the scene, you don't have to do a screenshot. You can simply click up here on screenshot and this will save the scene. After that, again, you simply pull it down here into the control net input, choose the method you want to use. Now here's something to look into. When you're using these pose images, you want to experiment with the methods you're using in control net. For example, use the normal map, use the depth map, use the head map to see what kind of different results you're getting from that. Another thing that can also be very interesting is to use the fake scribble method. Now they all have their upsides and downsides, but experiment with them and see what gives you the best result depending on the complexity of the scene. In this case, I use the input image of a character sitting on the barrel and you can see that the output also is pretty good. The next tool I want to show you is called Days 3D. This is a posing 3D software. It is completely free and it comes with a lot of assets, poses and environments that you can use. 
Now, there is a certain learning curve here to understand how to do things, but because the only thing you need is a simple setup of the scene and the pose, you don't need to understand everything in the software. To download this, the first thing you need is to go here to Download Studio and then to download this Central, because this will install not just the software, but also assets like characters, poses, all these kind of things. After you've done this, you also want to click here on the shop link because you can see here there's some weekly freebies. So you might want to check that out. There's different clothing in there, sometimes poses, all kinds of stuff that you can get for free. And of course, if you want to go deeper into that software, there is also up here community link for the forum, but also for the gallery if you want to check that out. And you can go in there and ask the community for help and guidance. Now, here's a simple guide on how to get started with your first steps in Dash 3D. First of all, I found that when you adjust your window so that the viewport that you have in the middle is square or almost square, the render images you're saving have the same ratio. That can be really beneficial for your rendering so you don't have to crop that afterwards. So the first thing you need to do is to check out here this tab called Smart Content. In here on the left side, you have a lot of different categories. First, we need to have a figure. I want to use Genesis 3. So let's click on that. Let's click on Figures again. And here we have a female figure. When you double click on that, that female figure is loaded for us into the scene. Next, of course, we need some clothing for that character. So click here on Wardrobe. And we have here a dark storm outfit. So let's click on that. This is getting loaded and already put for you onto the body. Then let's also add some hair in this category. Let's go with the short blonde hair here. Double click. It looks all a little bit strange, but don't worry about that. Now here is something I would suggest to you. She has some shoulders here and she has some gloves that are dark. Now this can hinder the AI to understand what is going on in the scene. So on the right side here, where you have your scene, you see here the Genesis 3 female. Click on this so the pop-down menu is visible. And in here you have the different assets that are attached to the body. In this case, I want to remove the armor. So we have an eye here. Click on that so the eye is getting closed. Then you can maybe also remove the collar here in front, but you can also leave that on and then the AI will use that to create a collar also in your image. Also, we see here the gloves, so let's also turn them off. And now we have a character with a nice and easy to read outline. Next, of course, we want to have a pose. So let's go again on the left side here, click on poses. You can see we have a nice choice. So when you double click on them, you can see that the pose is now loaded for you. When you mouse over the scene, you also get a preview of that pose. And when you double click, this is then applied to the image. You can also download more poses from the web store or when you find some on the internet from the community or other sources. Now, how do you adjust what you see in your image? That's actually very easy. On the top right here, we have different icons and this is adjusting the viewport. So when you click on the top one, we can then rotate the camera. You want to click and drag. Next, we have here this cross. This is for going upwards, downwards, left and right. Then we have a zoom tool here to go in and out of the scene. And that's basically the main methods. Now let's do a first render of that scene because I want to show you a little trick. Up here, you have a camera icon. This is opening up a window and starting the render process for you. Now, as you can see here from the checkboard pattern in the background, the character doesn't have a background and that is super nice for us. Down here in the lower part, you can enter a name for your file and then simply save it. Now, here's the cool thing. Because this is a PNG without a background, I can put anything in the background. So let's say I have a photo of a castle. Well, I can simply put her in there and I can resize here. I can move her around. Of course, the perspective now is fixed. We can't change the light position. But other than that, I can put that character in any kind of scene. And this not only makes it very flexible, but also allows me to create scenes with multiple characters. And of course, I can use that character in any kind of background I want. So if I choose to put her in a forest, also possible. But of course, in a 3D software, we also have the choice to use 3D environments. 
So let's look again on the left side. You want to click here on that little blue arrow to go back. There it says environments. Here I want to choose Genesis 2. And in there I have this scene. So let's double click. And there is the scene loaded for me. Now the perspective is all wrong. So again, we click up here to drag the camera around. And we zoom in and out and move the camera until we find a perspective we actually want to use. Let's go here a little bit closer, a little bit further up. Camera like this maybe. So we have this little fountain in the background. That looks pretty good. Now I have my character a little bit too close. So what you want to do here is select your character up here. And then down here you have transform. With that I can move my character in that space very easily. For example with X I move her left and right and with Z I move her I move her further away or closer to me. In this case also let's rotate her a little bit so she's looking towards the camera. And then also let's do something else here because as you can see the hands are kind of sinking into her clothing. So let's click on the arm here. And you can see that the transform here is already chosen for me. So I want to twist the arm a little bit around like so. That's already pretty good. Let's maybe bend this a little bit inwards. And then I want to click here on the hand. And we can use side by side to move that inwards a little bit. Now let's also click on the other arm. Twist that a little bit outside and then bend it a little bit like so. So now the hand is sitting on the hip. Pretty hip. All right, let's, let's, let's go on here by clicking on our camera symbol. Now this rendering would take a longer time. So while the rendering is still running, you want to click down here in the corner on cancel. It is asking you if you want to stop the render, click on yes. And then you have a half rendered image, but that is good enough for us for the pose and the background. Enter a name, click on save. You want to drag this down here into control net, adjust your methods, adjust your settings up here and render the scene. And you can see here because we have not just a pose but also a background we get a beautiful scene where we have a lot of artistic control over everything. Another advice I want to give you here is that you want to describe the background scene a little bit in your prompt. For example in this case a stone fountain because this can help the AI understand what you want to have in the background. Now for my last trick I want to show you something that is mind-blowing and it's absolutely fun and it will allow you to create really complex and amazing scenes. And this is to actually use screenshots from a movie like here I have a scene from Blade Runner. Really beautiful composition but now we're going to change that into this scene made by H.R. Giger who is the designer behind the Alien movies. So in this case when we look at my prompt I write raw photo of Blade Runner reimagined by H.R. Giger. This is set to a weight of 1.2. Wearing organic H.R. Giger alien clothing. H.R. Giger background. Extremely detailed CG Unity 8K wallpaper. Most beautiful artwork in the world, professional majestic impressionism oil paint, trending on ArtStation, trending on CG Society, intricate, highly detailed, dramatic. I also have a long and complex negative prompt. And one thing I absolutely want to suggest to you, if your GPU is strong enough for that, is to set a pretty high resolution. In my case I'm using a resolution of 1280 by 768. The reason for that is because that high resolution will give you a lot more detail in your image. You can also see in this case that I'm using a rather low CFG scale of only 4 but I found that this really helps me get great results with these movie scenes. Because this is a complex scene and it has a lot of depth in it, I'm not using the canny method or the head method, I'm using the depth method. Now this also helped me to create, now this also helped me to turn that scene more into something from H.R. Giger rather than sticking to the original elements. Here we have another scene from that movie and I turned this into different styles through the prompt. One is more H.R. Giga and a lot darker. Then we have another one that is more cyberpunk and one that is somewhere in between. 
So here you have it, a lot of amazing methods from easy to very complex. And in the end, that movie scene conversion is just mind blowing and I'm having so much fun with that. Join my Facebook group to share what you are creating and share your tips and tricks with the other users. Also, I have a Discord where you can talk live to my community. Let me know in the comments what you think. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.